look a bit dark. Uh, we've arrived at the Monsal Trail. It's only like three minutes from where we're staying. And I'll show you in a minute the steps I'm negotiating down and where we're heading. Hello. Hello. Started off at Monsal Head where we parked the car. Tip, the pay by phone app is probably an easier experience if you don't carry much cash. So we're negotiating these steps very carefully and it does look like it's a lot easier through here. It's very beautiful actually. Monsal Trail, former railway line until 1968. Headstone Tunnel is there. Straight ahead is the viaduct that we've seen from a distance. From the 1920s of a train going over this ferry viaduct. Wow. And then an advertising poster there. Viaduct under construction in the 1860s. Because when you're on the viaduct, you don't really see the beauty of the viaduct, per se. But you can see the surrounding landscape very nicely. And right at the very top there was uh, where we pulled over in the car. Beautiful. Very steep hillsides or valley sides. Sue just spotted this. A Croydon connection. John Ruskin. And lots of bikes and also bikes with a little electric motor, whatever they're called. E-bikes? I don't know. Uh, yeah, E-bikes coming whizzing by. Families on bikes. Lots and lots of bikes. But yeah, this would have been for, I'm guessing for about 100 years, on the basis that the poster said the railway line was being built in the 1860s. And it closed in 1968. Completely silent. It must have taken a serious amount of working to cut through all of that stone for the sake of a railway, railway line. Easy for me to say. But it didn't last. Not that they knew it wasn't going to last. It, it pains me slightly to say it, but when you go to some of these stations that are disused and you see where they're located, you get completely where Dr. Beeching was coming from. Because as romantic as it would have been, if it's not commercially viable, then you have to do something about it. It's always been like that, really. Crestbrook Mill ahead of us. River Y running along there. Mike won't pick it up, but you can hear the running water from a, a higher level further up. Look at that stunning scenery. Just That's a cut good. through. It is, isn't it? The, I know it was obviously a mill, therefore a workplace, but now it's probably a very nice place to live. Crestbrook Tunnel, AD 1883. So maybe even though we saw the railway being built, or a picture of the railway being built in the 1860s, it wasn't actually uh, operational till after that. So we're going to have a little walk through here. We're in the tunnel. And there's that beautiful echo. There's no one coming through here at the moment, although cyclists are coming through the whole time. And it's, it's just like a whisper of wind coming through. Quite strange, actually. Got a pathway here. And obviously the old line would have been in the middle. And just to recap the story, these were closed for a number of years, many years, a few decades after the railway line shut. And then reopened, I believe, 2011. I don't know if that was all opened at the same time. or But that date was on something I read. As you can expect, nice and cool here. Warm day today, quite uh, humid. Lovely and cool in the railway tunnel. The wind's blowing from behind us. 
really weird. Sue and I just stopped because it was almost, there's a train coming, <laughs> but it's one of the e-bikes that's just going to pass us very soon. And this is why something will have lights on, of course, because safety and all that. I don't know if that came across, but it was just the fact that it was so quiet and then we just both heard this sound gradually building. See the end of the tunnel straight ahead there. Just about make out some light from that end. You know, brickwork there, multiple shades of brickwork here. <coughs> Bless you. I don't think those eyes were there originally. Westbrook Tun. We are heading back along the same way that we came in on the trail and when we get to below Monsell Head which is where we sort of saw the other tunnel I'm going to make a decision as to whether I pop down further to get a, a, a sort of up close view of the viaduct or whether we just head back up and get an ice cream. So I will report back once the decision has been made. I decided to leave Sue at the top. No, she, she said she wanted to stay at the top. And I wanted to come down and check out uh, the viaduct, different view. So that's the extremely craggy path that I've just come down. It gets a bit smoother here. But it's worth it really. Because you get the most beautiful view of the viaduct. I'm going to carry on down a bit, carefully, come with me and uh, it opens out. I saw some cow pats back up the hill and I was thinking with all this flat land surely it's easy to go here rather than up there but there's no telling these lovely animals. A lot of loose material on the side there and then we have Sue taking a picture and I'm glad I popped down here because I didn't really want to do a long trek round absolutely beautiful I do love this part of the summer actually when it's a little bit later the light's less harsh. You can see all the colours. And uh, barely a ripple. I'll take a couple of stills again. And then another few images looking up. And then, um, then we're going to climb back up to where we parked the car and reward ourselves with an ice cream. Hopefully they're still selling them. Please finished two hours at least three miles I lost it for my watch now this it has to be done after walking the trail